Hi, I'm Craig Davis. We're here at the SPC Summit Latin America. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Sim Bilak, the president of Suzo Hat. Thanks for giving us your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's kind of look at the evolution of sports betting, if you will. Just talk us a bit about the developments we've seen recently for yourselves and let's have a retail slant at this. What, what role does retail play in, in this constant evolution? One of the things that I think a lot of the sports book providers and operators today, everyone's been historically focused on market share, market gains, customer retention. And most recently we've seen with some of the larger operators now starting to look at profitability. And I think the retail solutions play perfectly into that. A lot of the retail deployments to date have been mainly based in casinos, casino operators trying to get the cross-pollination from their traditional casino players into their sports book and vice versa. And that's been, you know, pretty much to date a lot of our deployments. And we're starting to see now with markets like Ohio and other states starting to look at retail as a more significant generator of revenue for sports books. And I do believe ultimately the, the big benefit that we will see is when we start getting into retail venues and you have sports fans becoming sports betters, because that I think is going to be a larger opportunity because the, the demographic is much bigger. Whereas today, it's mainly the professional players that can understand the parlays and all the complexities on the mobile. Whereas I think in the retail environment, it's very conducive to be able to have an environment where players can come up and place a bet on a particular game without having a lot of education or experience and really making that a fun experience and part of the overall event uh, at a sports event or at any venue. You mentioned mobile, digital. It's, it's such a big, I was going to say digital North American market, digital global market that we're in right now. How, how does retail compete? I mean, I suppose there's a lot of talk of mobile. Does it, does it over-dominate? How, how, does, how does retail compete and keep that place? There is a market for retail at the end of the day. There's a certain demographic of customer that prefers to be in, in a retail environment. Maybe they're not a sports better, but more of a sports fan or enjoying the environment at a casino or at a retail venue and looking to place a bet. And what we're doing as well from the technology side at Suzo Hap is we're trying to move away from these podium kiosks that everyone's used to, going up and placing a bet, right? That's fine, we need those. But ultimately, what we're really more focused on is making it ease of access for someone to place a bet. So we recently introduced our bar top terminal. So you could put this terminal on the top of a bar, and then it's more conducive to in-game betting. So you've got a sports fan enjoying a beverage, sitting at the bar, watching the game, and they can continue to bet during the game. And that's where we see the biggest play is really an in in-game betting. And I think retail is very conducive to in-game betting. So we've got all types of solutions for all types of venues and customers to really make it frictionless, right? At the end of the day, we want a frictionless experience. And one of the other nice things we've also developed on, on the hardware side We've even been able to create a solution with one of our partners where someone could go in and place a bet with cash. What a great idea, right? Place a bet with cash. Well, we learned that in casinos, right? So now we've been able to introduce that into sports betting. So now you have, you know, a sports fan, maybe not have a wallet, doesn't want to go through the hassle, but wants to place a bet. And we've created a frictionless experience where they can go place a bet with cash and even if they're lucky enough to win, get paid out in cash. What a wonderful experience. And now you've got a sports fan who's become now a sports better. So I, I suppose a lot of what you hear with retail is kind of the high costs. I mean, mobile's so easy and we've, we've spoken about that a little bit so far. Um, I suppose how, what, what's your argument against this? How, how's, how's that offset? So as I just mentioned, we have a solution that basically allows a player to buy in with cash. I probably should have been a little more explicit. So what we've actually created is a, an unattended ecosystem. So you literally could have a kiosk, a redemption terminal, and the customer could go up and place their bet entirely on their own with cash. So you actually don't need the high cost of labor that you have in retail. You could literally have an unattended sports book in any venue that's obviously legally approved to do so. Omnichannel. 
we, 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 channel. We, we hear a lot about everyone likes omni channel. We, we, we hear a lot about omni channel. Um, not easily done. I, 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 but well, yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to get your opinions on this. How 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 key is omni channel? Is this an, an inevitability? I think if you look at a lot of the players in the space, they're starting to understand that more and more. So if you look at some of the guys that are you know typically already into sports that have now got into a sports betting, there's some different companies that have done that. Then you look at the companies that are casino land based that are now getting into sports betting. At the end of the day, whether it's a sports media company or a sports apparel company that's now gone into sports betting or a casino operator that's now going into sports betting, what they're all ultimately trying to do is create this omni-channel experience that's really frictionless. And I think we play well to that because some of them may transact online, some of them may want to transact in retail, and what they want to do is create a frictionless experience for their customer, whether it's a land-based customer or an online customer. And then obviously they can play into it nicely as well, technology-wise, with different incentives for those customers as well. So I think there's a, a, a very strong uh, case for both retail and online to coexist very strongly, provided that whoever the operator is, is ensuring a, a frictionless transition between the, the retail opportunity and also online and making sure that that experience for the customer is, is a fun experience. To conclude, let's swing the focus back to the company itself. We're very quickly approaching the end of the year. What are the hopes, ambitions, what Suzo Hat going to achieve through 2024 and beyond? What can we expect? So we're, we're pretty excited about the sports betting growth opportunity in the US still and, and looking at other markets such as Latin America and other areas that are starting to develop. And our, our core casino and amusement business is, is very stable and we've done a great job looking after our customers in that space. So for us, what we're really looking forward to next year is really continuing that growth momentum and trajectory that we're on in the sports betting space. We've truly positioned ourselves as the hardware preferred supplier into the space and hardware is what we do. We've done it for many years. We're one of the largest in the world for casinos and amusement manufacturers. So for us, this was a natural step to get into sports betting. And then the operators, we work with the operators. We have the necessary gaming licenses to be able to sell to them, which is a requirement. And then obviously we have the network and service infrastructure to support them. Obviously it's a key. It mean, we need to ensure uptime and the success of their project. Excellent, Sam. Thanks a lot for your time. Really Very nice it. meeting you. Thank you for the interview. <laughs>